I'm going to start off with a rant, and then I'm going to bring it back at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from the uh, profiling the profession stats that have been coming up today, we can see the number of women working in archaeology drops off uh, at about 40 years old onwards, and uh, it becomes a noticeable gender gap. Um, before I tackle the working in archaeology issues, I'm going to give some examples of uh, gender inequality in the UK. Um, examples that show that we have not yet, re not yet reached gender equality, but progress is underway. Um, okay, so looking at the BBC website in 2014, uh, men get more prize money in 30% of sports. At the 2014 Winter Olympic Games, women were allowed to compete in the ski jump for the first time. The women's ski jump has been happening for 150 years, uh, but the International Olympics Committee deemed it too dangerous, mentioning that uh, there were possible reproductive system injuries. Uh, and if you think about the differences between men and women, yeah. <laughs> yes. um, so finally they were allowed to do it in 2014, a number of women came out of retirement who had been doing it all of their lives and could never uh, go to the Olympics. Uh, now the ski jump and the cross-country skiing combined event is still left without women's representation. Okay, now I'm going to cite the Telegraph in uh, 2014. Gender pay gap widens as we approach 40. Why is this? Uh, they cite childcare issues, the cost of childcare, stopping women getting back to work, and career breaks, uh, women getting less far up the ladder. So we know that in recent years additional paternity leave uh, has uh, come in and since April 2015 very recently shared paternity leave. The Telegraph stats in 2012 to 2013 were as follows. 209,000 fathers were eligible for additional paternity leave and only 2% took it. Uh, so if we want equality in the workplace, we also need equality in the home. Um, it's obviously linked and it's obvious that the traditional roles of the mother staying at home and father not taking his additional paternity leave are prevailing. Okay, 2014, Chartered Management Institute, survey of 68,000 managers in the UK. Men were paid an average of 23% more. To earn the same money, women would have to work an extra 14 years to earn 80. Makes me so mad. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the, that's the worst part of the rant done with. Okay, my experiences working in archaeology I graduated in 1999 from UCL. Uh, I, my first job, very exciting, three months working in centre of London, excavating. I was laid off, I think it was on the 23rd of December. Nice. <laughs> um, moving on a few years, uh, I was working for a large nationwide company in 2003 as an assistant supervisor. Uh, I became pregnant. I actually found my contract the other day. Uh, I was being paid £14,000 a year. Uh, I received maternity pay and uh, my contract continued through the pregnancy. I was grateful. I was grateful for my £14,000 a year. Um, I was actually grateful uh, for the suitable job allocations I was given. I was also grateful for being moved away from the Heathrow runway because I was worried about the amount of fumes that we were uh, being subjected to. Uh, I was given time to go to doctor's appointments. Uh, 
and when I was very pregnant, I uh, was put on pot washing uh, duties. So that was um, that was a way through it, basically. <laughs> uh, as a mother, uh, away work and living out of a bag becomes increasingly difficult. When I was a young graduate, uh, it was an exciting way to see the world. Um, and I was an archaeological purist. I wasn't thinking about careers. I was thinking about where to go for the interesting archaeology. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that took, that was a factor in my uh, career choices. So anyway, getting back to uh, being an archaeologist and a mother, as we've covered earlier, the low pay when you're supporting dependents is a massive issue. Um, watching briefs and childcare. Uh, as an archaeologist, probably uh, five years into your career, you're going to start doing watching briefs. Uh, you respond to builders' needs and timescales on a daily basis. You have late notice bookings. Often, the last thing on their mind is the archaeologist. They also think if you know, they book you late notice and you can't come, they can get away with not doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, random locations, uh, random amounts of travel time, you never know how long your working day is going to be. Also late notice cancellations uh, are common. Builders also want their money's worth, understandably. Uh, not, um, sometimes they'll continue digging holes or they won't get going until 3 p.m. in the afternoon sometimes if the machine hasn't arrived. So all these factors, when you're trying to plan childcare, can be very difficult. So my example of childcare costs for two children. This is once they're at school, so you've got eight hours a day, no, six hours a day, where you don't have to pay for the childcare. So starting at 8 a.m. in the morning and going on till 5.45 is the maximum wraparound care uh, where I live. And for two children, that's £25 a day. So that's £125 a week if you use it every day. So that's £500 a month of childcare. Mm. Uh, taking the example of a project officer being paid £20,000 a year, that's a third of my take-home money. Okay, also once booked it's hard to cancel, so if the builder changes their mind you're still paying for it. But for a last minute booking it may be full, other people in um, normal jobs kind of know when they need the childcare further in advance. 8am might not be early enough for you to then commute to a watching brief on two hours away. Uh, there are other jobs in archaeology where you can manage your time better than the pure field work side of it. Builders' attitudes to women. Uh, the majority of builders and ground workers are straightforward, hardworking, friendly. Um, it, goes, it helps a lot if you understand their programme and their goals and get a good working relationship going. And throughout my probable best part of 10 years of doing watching briefs, um, I've only had a few problems of how people have treated me in very male-dominated uh, environments. I've had the odd comments, uh, for example, site manager saying, this role must be very hard for you on building sites. And I thinking, I say yes, thinking archaeology, yes, can be hard. And he says, but nowadays you get women HGV drivers and sparkies. And me think, saying, yes, you do, realising that he wasn't talking about being an archaeologist, he was talking about being a woman. Uh, on sites with a number of men and going on my own, uh, I've often been treated as a trophy, depending on whose car I get a lift in. 
to have been part of the quarry or the site. Uh, bragging to other colleagues. I've uh, been offered lifts. I've been offered to be taken out for fry ups. <laughs> That's not all bad. Then. I did have a fry up once. <laughs> um, yeah, there's the there's the can we carry your bag side of it, which is very sweet. Uh, but obviously, uh, it's not an equal playing field, is it? I'm now going to lower the tone. Uh, when I was uh, a young archaeologist and fairly green, I left my boots and socks in a communal site hut uh, to be warned the next day that Builder X masturbated into them. Mm. And also the kettle, which is really <laughs> <laughs> uh, The 2014 site hut calendar for a large silica sand quarry on the wall of the site hut, which I was made very welcoming, uh, of women in minimal underwear. Uh, some of the shots were quite arty, black and white, <laughs> but still, I found it quite awkward. <laughs> and that takes us to... Do I just click on that? I think so. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, that's an arrow. The quarry site hut. Uh, the last uh, quarry I worked on for Clue Powers Archaeological Trust, the quarry site hut sex excuse mug. Uh, I'm looking at the mug and I've, I actually thought about this quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All the excuses could come from either gender, even that I've run out of pills, because I think there's a male contraceptive pill. <laughs> so. But obviously, it has a tone, doesn't it, that it is, uh, I think, for, from women. Okay, okay so from my experience, I'm now going to give some suggestions on how to combine fieldwork and family life. Uh, live near to the archaeological company and become established prior to having children. Uh, freelancing is a uh, good option. You can get better day rates and the own, own control of your time, especially in school holidays, although it does have other problems if you're thinking that you might want to get a mortgage, for example, for your family to live in. Uh, progress your career for better pay and rates, join archaeological institutions, meet other professionals, social network. Don't limit yourself, give promotions a go, practice interviews, equip yourself to do the job, think about career progression and more importantly, believe in yourself. Talk to managers about flexi time, working from home, working part time. Uh, as we've heard earlier from Fiona, mothers can be very efficient and experienced and have constant daily deadlines. Uh, if you are doing a watching brief, explain to builders uh, on the induction of daily working hours uh, and how they can work around this if you're travelling a long way. Uh, personally, since having children, I've moved from being a part-time employee uh, I've been made redundant, uh, I've been a freelancer, I've been employed in a uh, full-time job, uh, I've now progressed uh, to be a project manager so I can plan my time and work from home and have flexibility in the daily pattern. So I have left uh, excavation to become desk-based. I suppose, but I'm still accepting this. Uh, and that was um, to make myself more flexible for my family and for better pay. Uh, my, last of, my last point uh, to consider is the roles of the mother and father and the alternative working patterns you can adopt. Uh, for a period, myself and my husband both worked 30 hours a week, so we were both covering um, family life and work life evenly uh, and although this did take a bit of getting used to and there was quite a lot of list writing um, I 
really enjoyed it. Uh, my boss at the time uh, supported me and uh, that was a massive, massive help. Um, I think quite a modern way forward, but it does help if you're established in your role first. Uh, other ways of getting through, as we've also heard earlier, was staggered working shifts between yourself and your partner. Um, my partner is a nurse, so he was doing quite a lot of night shifts, so I was working in the day, he was working at night. It meant that we didn't really see each other very much, um, but uh, it was, yeah, it, it was a way forward, it was a way through it. Um, so yes, that, that, they're my uh, experiences, uh, and I hope uh, that that may have helped uh, other people coming through.